and this literally shows you how much I want to travel if I'm sleeping in my bed with a travel pillow pretending that I'm on a plane. Hi guys, it's your curious and awkward friend Vasi. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited for today's video. It's actually our last video for 2020. How exciting is that? And if you're watching this in 2021, Happy New Year! And I wish you all the best in the next year. I want to show you my top 10 travel essentials and also give you 10 tips and tricks of things that I learned literally the hard way. I wasted lots of time and money learning those things so I want to share with you my experience so you don't make the same mistakes as me. And this is coming from someone that uh, until last year used to travel every month. This video is in collaboration with Miniso which is a Japanese inspired lifestyle store and they also have lots of products for traveling that are all versatile, inexpensive and practical. Did I also say that they are very budget friendly but also high quality and we love this on this channel. So let's start with the things that you can do in advance before you actually go traveling. First of all, you should totally use Skyscanner and I feel like not enough people know about this website and it has just saved me so much money you can't even imagine. It gives you all the options which you can use of all airlines and all flights of your destination. You can also say that you're flexible with your date and it will show you the cheapest date on which you can travel or what I actually usually do is if you're not sure where you travel and it's like 2021 and you would literally go anywhere as long as you're not staying home you can choose here to search everywhere and then it will show you the cheapest destinations for your chosen dates or period of time. Number two, this is more on the safety side and I Boring. hope my mom is actually proud that I'm saying this but you should totally make a photocopy of your passport or just take a photo and keep it on your phone. But if you lose your passport or unfortunately you get robbed, won't be in trouble because at least you will be able to go back home. And if you actually like this video and you find it useful, don't forget to subscribe because I would love to have you in my small little community. Love you all! You should always have two different documents in two different places. I usually bring with me my passport that I keep in my backpack and also my ID card that it's usually in my handbag. In this way, in case something happens with my handbag, I still have with me another document which I can use to go back home. Another important tip which I kind of learned the hard way is that you should always let your bank know that you're traveling. Last year my card got blocked when I was in New York and because of the time difference and because it was Saturday, I had to wait until Monday to uh, to call my bank and get it unblocked. So trust me, you don't want to be in this situation. Always make sure you alert them. Plus it takes you like literally one minute to do it. And next tip on things that you can do in advance is to download Google Maps for the city where you'll be going. If you're traveling uh, internationally, you don't want to use all your data for Google Maps all the time because it's quite expensive, let's be honest. Plus it takes more battery if you're using your 4G. What I do instead is I download the map of the city on Google Maps and in this way you can also use it offline. Just keep in mind that uh, usually maps are quite heavy so you might need to free up your phone but it's totally worth it because in this way you could be sure that you won't get lost at any point or even if you're, you finish your data you can still manage to go back to your hotel. Something else that you can do in advance is download both Uber, Lyft or any other app that is used in the area and before you book you can always quickly compare prices. My next tip is to always travel on Wednesdays. Like, don't ask me why, but when you go to Skyscanner, you will actually realize that the cheapest prices are on Wednesday. And of course, you if you have the time to do it, definitely do that. Flights usually cost like half of what they do during the weekend. Make the most out of your layovers. This is not for everyone. Like, for example, Ben really hates it. 
but what I love doing is when you have the option to choose a layover don't necessarily go directly with the one with the shortest amount of time you can always choose a one which is like 24 hours or even more and in this way you can visit another city during your layover for example when I was uh, traveling from Milan to Sofia I chose an extra stop in Rome so I can also uh, have an entire day to visit Rome on my own and it didn't cost pretty much anything never to take cash out of the airport and this is a super huge tip if you ever need a local currency make sure you have some cash before you actually arrive because usually those change bureaus at the airport have a super high commission never book the cheapest flight before actually checking because for example if your flight is very early in the morning then you might need to get a cab to get to the airport or you for example take the first bus at like 4 a.m yeah you don't want to do this to yourself sometimes uh, here at least in europe the low-cost airlines don't include within the price your carry-on luggage so you have to pay extra for it and many times British Airways or other flight companies might end up being cheaper than the super low-cost ones and now let me actually show you all my travel essentials and things that I got from the store of Miniso and the ones that I really suggest you getting as well because they would just make your life easier plus they're super budget friendly. And this might come a little bit as a surprise Whenever I plan my holiday, I love writing things down. In some way, it makes it feel more kind of real. So for example, for my next holiday, I have already writing what I'm planning to do, the places that I want to go, restaurants, or any information that I gather from articles, books, or, uh, or YouTube videos. I make sure to write it down so I have it all saved into one place. Uh, if you're more of a digital person and you like putting everything onto your phone, which it's also quite convenient, but uh, from my experience, I usually tend to run out of battery, so I make sure I have a power bank with me. And this one that I got, it's also quite cute and it's actually super light. It also has two plugs, so I can both charge my camera and my phone at the same time, or yeah, or Ben can steal it from me because he never brings his own. Let's talk about organizing your suitcase, especially if you're traveling with a carry-on. I recently got from Miniso this travel bag. You know how when you're traveling only with a carry-on, you can bring up to 100 milliliters of liquids, which is so annoying, especially for us girls with long hair, is that you can never bring your conditioner or shampoo with you and you're either kind of stuck with the bad ones at the hotel or you have to buy those small ones which are always super overpriced so what you can do instead is get those small bottles that cost like two pounds for example this small one i have this super big micellar water which there's no way i can bring because it's like half a liter and instead i'm going to pour it inside here you know how big is the hairbrush or at least mine is enormous and i usually travel with it but now i'm so excited to be traveling with this one look at it it's so compact i can literally put it in my handbag it's quite a big of a difference the next product which i'm going to show you it's really essential and i've been looking for it for quite a lot of time small foldable backpack look at it at this small thing it's also quite thin there is a whole backpack inside you can use every day and you can put inside your water bottle your food or any extra things that you buy during your holiday you can use one of these organizers that are super useful and you can even like put them like that hanging it's also super compact i actually also got one for ben because 
I want him to start organizing his suitcase and because it's that useful. I don't want to. You guys, you might think that I'm a little bit crazy, but I just have to show you this tip. One of the most important things which I do before actually heading to the airport is to prepare my food, especially for long journeys. I never leave without actually having a proper meal with me because we all know how expensive food can be at the airport and I just don't want to be spending so much money. Look how cute and compact meal box I found, which is actually on a couple of levels. On the first level I have lots of measured dates, pumpkin seeds and also oatmeal. You also have chopsticks which maybe I'm not gonna be using for the oatmeal let's be fair but if you have some rice in there or if you have packed literally any anything else but an oatmeal you can have it with those chopsticks. You can also bring your small cutlery with you like this is a cactus one. I always bring a bottle of water with me because it's super compact, it's sustainable and you save money and let's be honest we all love those things. And if you actually like this video and you find it useful don't forget to subscribe because I would love to have you in my small little community. Love you all! Bye! now the only thing that we're hoping for is that our flight isn't actually cancelled in two weeks.